Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's Delilah season one, episode five entitled, No Good Deed. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around. I have all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. Leah continues to assess her apartment in shambles as Delilah continues to give information to the police officers. She says, you know what? I suspected someone from the Osborne company. The man who observed Gary Shea's home was probably the same guy that was observing Leah's home. Also, if Leah had reached for her cell phone, this Route 459 would have been pretty dangerous. The cop says, you know what, most 459s don't look for any confrontation. Delilah says, I know. And that's exactly why I don't think this was a routine 459 situation. Is there any design of the device? They say no. Whoever did this disabled or removed the locators on the laptop and the cell phone. But we'll get back to you as soon as we get more information. Delilah says, wait, you two should be searching the Osborne offices, you know, checking which vehicles are missing from the corp fleet, which are checked out and by whom? And the cop says, look, since you're an attorney, I don't think we need to explain how obtaining a search warrant works. But until then, I'll run some prints to get some more evidence. And until then, we'll just have to wait. Delilah says, do you think that she did this by herself? Like, do you think that she just came? He says, look, ma'am, I don't know what either one of you would do, to be honest. Delilah was like, you know, I would think that you would do just a little bit more. I mean, talk to the neighbors to see if they saw or heard anything. I mean, do it. And the officer's just like, wait a minute, who do you think you are, lady? She says, Connolly, Delilah Connolly. And one of the cops says, as in Chief Connolly? She says, yeah, but not that it matters. And the cop says, well, not that it matters to you, but it does matter to the chief. Delilah says, look, you should talk to Fred Osborne to see if he has any idea as to what happened tonight. And Leah says, oh, and also speak to Tamara Roberts. And the cops want to know, well, who's she? Delilah says, nobody. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a wonderful night. And the cops leave. Delilah says, you don't think Tamara had anything to do with this, do you? And Leah says, well, she called me today. She wanted me to meet up because, you know, I guess she would give me a better settlement. I wanted to see what she had to offer. I mean, I drove all the way across town to meet her, but she never showed up. And I came home to find that man in my apartment. All she needed was that one hour that I was away. And she kept telling me that I might want to go ahead and listen to her settlement and what she has to offer. Or she would use everything and all that information that she got from that fake reporter. She said that she would make me an offer. And after that, there'll be no more. She set me up. Casey comes in the room after a good workout and teases her, gives her a hug. She's like, oh, get off of me. You're so sweaty. He wants to know if Delilah ever called her back because her date with Jamal was cut short. She says she had to leave early because something came up. He doesn't want to bother her, but I mean, he at least wants to know if she's okay. He's not upset or anything. Tamara says, you know what? Wow, she always finds a way to mess things up. I mean, it's just like her routine. Plus, she scheduled Fred's deposition. And I told her that it would just escalate things. <sighs> I want to move the trial up instead of waiting a month so we can just settle and get over this. Tamara gets a call from Delilah and wants to know if she can meet her alone in the lobby. Delilah tells Tamara, you know, you contacted Leah, my client, and you're not supposed to. Tamara says, sue me. And Delilah's like, maybe I should. You called her to meet. And when she came back home, her place was wrecked. They did this to send a message and they took the laptop and the cell phone directly from her hand. And Tamara says, so you think Osborne has something to do with this? I wanted to meet 
so I could settle and we could get over this stuff. I mean, I will ask Fred first thing tomorrow. You know what? But you're tripping. Look, are we still meeting for lunch? Because if not, I mean, you're still my maid of honor. And we need to talk about the wedding. Delilah says, yes. Of course, I'll be there. As Gordon and his new boo wake up, she gets a call that she has two weeks left to decide where she's going to live. And her friend has a possible place. She's upset that Gordon won't offer for her to live with him. And she tells him she's tired of the BS. He always says one thing but does another. And she questions, do you take me seriously? Am I still that student to you? Gordon insists that that's not the case, but she's not having it. Nate calls his wife, Christine, to see if she can meet for dinner at 8 p.m. She agrees, but she doesn't sound too enthusiastic about it. He says, look, I love you. And she doesn't respond. She rolls over, and we see why she's not too enthusiastic. Because Andre is there to soothe her frustration instead. Delilah goes to see her dad, and he's surprised to see her. She updates him on certain details concerning the Osborne case and Leah's break-in. She demands that he put someone on the case who actually cares. She needs that laptop to prove anything. She says that Nate's injury is correlated with Osborne and they're probably trying to cover it up. She shows him documentation of Nate's reports. You see how these reports differ about the same situation. Look, I wouldn't ask for your help, but I'm at my end. And my dad says, look, I'm guessing you got these documents from Gary Shea's wife. I would advise you that you tell her to hand everything over before she's charged for obstruction. And he hands her the files back. Delilah says, you know, are you any closer to an arrest? I mean, do you know who killed Gary Shea? And he says, you know what? Give me those files. And I'll see about putting a squeeze on Fred Osborne. Deal? Delilah responds with, thank you. Later on that evening, Delilah and Mace catch up over a game of cards. And Mace says, you know, what do you think they want with her cell and laptop anyway? I mean, do you think it's something like a sex tape or something? You know what? Also, at least uh, you and your dad are speaking again. That's a step. Delilah says, my guess is something that was sent uh, to Gary Shea or he sent something to Fred that Leah doesn't even know that's on there. I hope it's nothing like a sex tape. I mean, I asked her to bring that laptop twice to the office, you know, so we could copy the hard drive. She didn't do it. Anyway, still no sign of uh, Rick Pettingill, huh? He says, no, I mean, I spoke to someone Fort Briggs today, and they said that maybe he was CIA, but she wasn't sure. I mean, she said when someone goes missing like that, it's possibility. Folks just don't disappear. By the way, you need to talk to your dad. You only get one, and I learned the hard way. Look, your mom died after he left, okay? He didn't kill her. Delilah says, look, focus on the game and stop trying to psychoanalyze me. Then she calls Jen. And he says, you know what? I have these tickets to the show. I'll even pay for a sitter. But Delilah declines another offer. After Wynn goes over some documentation with his receptionist, Tamara walks in and closes the door and updates him about the Leah break-in. Wynn says, is she ready to settle? Tamara says, you know what? I just want to know if we are part of this. When Junior is informed that his dad has arrived and he says, you know, if you want to know any additional details, feel free to keep asking me or you can just ask when Senior, he's here. Harper updates Delilah about a potential case concerning pregnancy discrimination, but Delilah has too much on her case and says just hold off on that one. Leah has confirmed that the depot prep is ready and it should go from 10.30 a.m. to noon the next day. Delilah notices all of the plants at the front, but Harper explains that Demetria doesn't have a window. 
so she needs to have her plants directly in the front. Delilah wants Demetria to put all of the Gary Shea files back into the boxes, fingerprint free, because they'll eventually have to go back to the police. Demetria says, let me guess, you need legal coverage in case the widow of Gary hands everything over to the cops to ease her mind, you know? Delilah says, exactly, with some impressed vibes. Nate's physical therapist wants to help him get dressed, but Nate insists that he needs to learn how to do everything on his own because he has plans to meet with his wife later for dinner. He wants more independence and he doesn't want to go home making her feel like it's another kid in the house. And the physical therapist says, hey man, I can understand that. Looks like you're more independent. Your transfer from your chair to your bed is much smoother. Gordon tells Delilah that he has to meet with her face to face to discuss something very important. And she agrees. Tamara and Delilah have dinner. Tamara says, you know, Casey wants to make a slideshow of memories for the wedding. So try not to pick embarrassing photos when I had bangs. Delilah says, well, you went through a long phase with bangs. So <laughs> Tamara says, exactly. That's why I need you to assort and pick certain pictures for this slideshow. I got a venue in mind, but don't judge me. I was like, I'm not going to judge you. She's like, yeah, just try not to. Well, I got the Madison. Easter weekend. <laughs> you know, the Madison has been fighting for years to get an easement from the city, you know, to build on that land behind the Rose Garden. And I guess technically it's the city's property. Delilah says, hmm, so you got Casey to handle it. <sighs> This is how work gets done. Tim says, you know what? Of course I did. Why be married to the power if you're not going to use it, baby? <laughs> See, you're judging me again. By the way, I asked Wynn Jr. and Wynn Sr. about the whole Leah situation, and they say they have no idea. They don't know anything about it. And I'll ask Fred when we have our depot prep tomorrow. Look, I know you blame me for this slippery slope, but this case is hell. And look, I'll tell you what Fred said. Delilah says, so you really asked when senior, huh? Tamara says, you really ask me things twice, like all the time. Is this where we are in our friendship? Delilah says, Nate is paralyzed for the rest of his life. You didn't ask him, just admit it. You don't even care. Tamara says, you know what, you've crossed the line. And she starts to get her things to leave. But before she leaves the table, she makes sure that she puts down a $100 bill. Chief Connolly gets a call from Paul Green on his way home. And he wants to talk alone at Sugar Creek. Chief Connolly says, you know, I was expecting your call. You know, I would love to meet, but you know, my wife, she really wants me to watch this television show tonight. He tries his best to deflect this meeting, but Paul insists that they must meet face to face for old time's sake. As Delilah gets the boys off to bed, Marcus brags about how he plays Fortnite, but Delilah wants to know who's he playing this Fortnite game with. But he insists that you know, I've never played it. I'm just showing off. And Delilah says, well, stop it. Now you two get to bed. Gordon arrives to talk, and he wants to say a quick hello to the kids before they start. She says, that's fine. Christine surprisingly shows up to have dinner, but she doesn't want to be there. You could tell from her body language, and she's just not engaging. He looks at her for a while and says, you know what, I got a surprise for you. Just come give it a look. She stands up and sees that it's the puzzle of Niagara Falls. She says, wow, I remember you said you would take me there one day. And he says, we still can. And she's like, can you take me there still? I mean, with you like, I mean, can we even go? They says, yeah. I mean, they have this boat that rides straight there and it's accessible and everything. I mean, we could go. And Delilah, I mean, she can watch Dion. 
look, I still love you. And I want to make this work. But Christine doesn't say anything. But she pulls her hand away. And Nate says, you know what? Just think about it. And she says, you know, I'm not sure I can. And she makes it known that she's no longer connected in this marriage. As Gordon says, good night to everyone. Maya wants to speak with him alone, but we don't hear the conversation. Gordon then tells Delilah that he's asking his current girlfriend to move in with him. Delilah says, you know, there's no way that my kids are going to see you with her there. I mean, do her parents know? He says, yes. And Delilah says, do you or Maya know how you two met? I mean, that she was your student and that's why you were terminated from Davidson? <laughs> you know what? This will last for like five minutes. You picked her, a woman, not even 10 years older than Maya. I just got over how you did me so wrong and my family. And now you come to twist the knife? Gordon says, Delilah, I'm just trying to be happy. And we got to talk about our daughter, what she just told me. She wants to apply to, to a conservatory in Philly. I mean, she said that she'll have to skip senior year here, but she'd still get her diploma. Of course, I told her we would all have to talk about it. Delilah says, you know, we're going to have a long talk before any of my children step forth in anything that has to do with your house. And Gordon says, you know what? No, we're not. And he leaves. Chief Connolly meets with Mr. Green and he wants to know, why are we meeting here? Paul says, I thought I talked to my old partner. You know, I heard that you put Ken Collins from IA on some routine 459. Mr. Connolly says, who told you that? Paul says, Ken. He said you wanted him to ask Fred Osborne about the break-in. I mean, it makes sense, but Osborne Tactical, you know, they just came out with some new program. And he's providing all new body armor to the police force for free. There's going to be a press release tomorrow on the union website. Look, Osborne doesn't want any trouble especially with that daughter of yours. You know, sometimes little things get in the way and out of hand. And that's when people get hurt. And Chief Connolly says, I get it. I understand. And he leaves. Tam and Casey talk about the invitation list. And Tam says, you know, I care about everyone, you know, but Delilah needs to call me. and We need to talk about this. And by the way, I'm adding Wynn Jr. and Kate to this list. Delilah tells Mace, look, I know Tam is lying about talking to Wynn Sr. I mean, she's been my friend since middle school. She's always had my back. But now, I mean, I don't know. May says, you know, you need to call her. I mean, y'all have that rule in your friendship that you got to call each other before midnight. So why don't you just call her? You know what? I'll call her for you. And Delilah says, No. Don't call her. I'm serious. Later on that night, Delilah finally calls Tam. And Tam breathes a sigh of relief. And Casey rolls over to go to bed. Because they've both been waiting up to see if Delilah will call. Tam admits, look, I didn't talk to Wynn Sr. Because <laughs> it's everything I'm up against. The firm. I mean, everything. And I just, I just want this case to end. And, and I care about Nate. I mean, the fact that you said I don't care about Nate, I do. It's just the facts aren't there yet. Delilah says, if you just tell me the truth, I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, what, what, what is it? Tam says, you know, if, if there is a case to be made, then then fix it because it's killing me. I 
just want it to be done. It's a lot for me too, you know? And Delilah says, well, do you just want me to just still be your maid of honor or what? Tam says, you know, this trial is about a month away and, you know, it might simplify things a little. So, yeah, let's let's just take a beat. I mean, you're still my sister. Good night. Demetria says, here is the British patent of Wellington's remote detonator. A list of mathematicians that you can use in court as expert witnesses to walk a jury through how wireless system on the C-15 and the Wellington detonator intersect. Delilah says, so this is in a language that the jury will understand, right? Demetria says, uh, no. <laughs> Delilah says, you know, I didn't think so. <laughs> By the way, how are things? Demetria says, you tell me. She's like, how are things and how are you in Harper? Demetria is like, is this about the plants? I mean, look, I don't have any light in this broom closet that you call an office. And you know what? I wanted to put a grow lamp in here, but I thought that you wouldn't think it was professional. And before Delilah can respond, Harper informs her that her dad is there to see her. Delilah says, I'm hoping that you're here to tell me that Fred Osborne cracked. Says, no. You know, and, and no one's even been in for questioning. Look, there's a majority of white cops in this force. Osborne, he bought them new armor for free. And they watch every move I make. And Delilah says, you know what? What about Nate? And her dad says, you know, the number one thing is finding Rick Pattingill, okay? Not harassing Fred Osborne. Delilah says, you know what? This is one more time you're putting work before family. It means one more than everything. And before she can finish her thought, police barge into her office and tell her that she's under arrest for tampering with evidence and obstruction of justice. Even Mr. Connolly says, and this is ordered by who? Stand down. And they say, no, we can't because it's ordered by Judge Akers. And he says, oh, of course. They begin to read her her rights. And Demetria tries to step in and say that I am her lawyer. But the cop says that that's fine. And you're more than welcome to accompany us to the station. And they continue with reading her her rights. And that is the end of the episode. It's review time. Oh my goodness, you guys. Finally something revving up this series, you know? And of course, with the fluidity of the other episodes, they always drop a bomb on us at the very end of the episode. It's it's just the fluidity is very predictable and kind of frustrating because you're like, oh, okay, there's five minutes left. Something's about to happen. And I don't like that. I like to be surprised and shocked when big things happen because it keeps me guessing as a viewer. I mean, it's been the same kind of fluidity with each episode and I'm noticing that so uh, hopefully that might change we can start I guess with Marcus so with Marcus it's just very evident that he's talking about this video game he's staying late at the basketball court it's either going to be one or two things either there's going to be him quote unquote missing but he's actually at a friend's house which is going to create panic or he's going to stay out late and he's going to be found and he learns that as a lesson not to stay out late but it's very very obvious to know that much detail in a video game that he's been playing a video game with somebody else and it's somebody else a friend that Delilah doesn't know about so that's a lot of foreshadowing there also they show how Dion has lost a tooth and you know he's she's saying to say words you know that sound funny without his tooth so I thought that was really cute because you know clearly something happened in real life so it could correlate in the script you know because you'd say hey last last episode he had a tooth you know two front teeth and now he has one missing so you know I noticed how they just kind of wrote that line in there so it was pretty cute also Maya with her character it's pretty understandable she's at the age where she doesn't want to be at home she has the younger brother she barely sees her family with school and practice and now she wants to go away and this is something that her teacher remember was telling her that just to blossom and do what you want and then also Delilah should be open-minded um to her 
you know, critiquing and growing and learning because she's really gifted when it comes to being a violinist. So, of course, that would be an episode, of course, itself. So, we'll, you know, look at that. Also, with Gordon and the girlfriend, you know, I kind of agree with Delilah that, you know, maybe this is a character that doesn't like to be alone. He's kind of dragging around this student. And it's really important that, you know, there's some communication about why those two got a divorce, that there was infidelity. I mean, she's the oldest. She should have least know that it's time to share it it's time to share it because in her eyes right in the daughter's eyes her dad can do no wrong he's just super perfect he got her this very expensive violin and you know he's probably going to be the one to convince Delilah for her to go away at school so he looks like the hero he looks like he every time that he comes by things get done so that's something that she needs to know she needs to know that he's not the perfect dad and that he's caused his mom a lot of pain and I need that episode to happen Mace the fact that he's so pushy on trying to get things sparked with Delilah is kind of weird because he's always you know bringing that up every time that he sees her he wants to go out on a date so bad but she's telling him that hey I'm going out on this date I got this stuff going I got that going it's kind of like dude just kind of give it up because now it's getting like creeper mode and it's kind of bothering me like is he gonna be a stalker Is he watching Delilah? Does he have her whole house bugged? I mean, that would be a shocker. I mean, come on, I should be on this in this writer's room. I mean, that would be really interesting. I mean, because he does have access to certain things that he shouldn't have access to, right? The face recognition uh, equipment, all of the cameras, all that stuff. So he just, he just, uh, something runs me the wrong way about this. Also with Casey, very evident that this is a very crooked guy. He knows a lot of crooked people. He does a lot of crooked things. The fact that he can make stuff happen so fast um, is really, really weird to me. And he's always been a side eye from the beginning. So mm, I won't be surprised if it comes out that he's working with Osborne's or other people while talking to Tamara about certain things. That would not be shocking because it's it's a lot, like I said, it's a lot of foreshadowing with a lot of characters and they're making it pretty obvious the um delilah also with this guy jamal i also said from the beginning i don't trust him either you know either he's really really blind to what casey is doing or he's also a pawn he doesn't know that he's a pawn he he's being used all the time because psychologically he may feel like he owes Casey something right because he did describe on the date with Delilah that he grew up with them and that's like a big brother so it wouldn't surprise me if Casey has kind of dragged him into a lifestyle in which he's accustomed to so yeah 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 and the marriage between him and Tamara seems kind of forced and a little weird it's kind of like she wants to get married and he wants an image right because of what he does that he wants to have the wife on the arm but it's something about those two that will come out it's something about Jamal and Casey that I feel will come out as a cliffhanger maybe at the end of the season to carry us over because of course the goal as a television show is to bring more seasons more viewers and to keep going as long as possible you want to go further than just one season so mm, I can feel that that's coming up you know predictable 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 Uh, so with Demetria she's a tough cookie but I still haven't I still haven't figured out if she's team Delilah or team something else, I think that money might play a role in what she's doing. I feel that she'll continue to do her homework about Harper. It's very evident that Harper is hiding something as well. And Delilah is assisting her to do it because you have someone that's pretty much overqualified when it comes to her and Harper. And yet Demetria has this dual role along with her. So, mm, kind of interesting I mean I know that she's graduated and she's you know Demetria and she has the status of you know she can represent someone as a lawyer but you would think that Delilah would be Delilah would be closer to the front that she would have more of a presence in the office and not way in the back you know it's some it's some things to work out and one thing that I mentioned one thing that I thought about is I know that they did say that there was another individual that in another room right in that building right that she's this it's a doctor a psychologist or something i forgot but we haven't seen that person yet where, where they at? <laughs> can we see their face can we see their door i mean that i mean they're writing a lot of details not a lot but they're writing some details that we're not physically seeing um it's frustrating that we're seeing the same sets 
over and over again i mean can we get some shots of the city can we get some more skylines besides Tamara's high-rise apartment it's the same scenes it's the same you know production sets it's, it's delilah's house it's Tamara's apartment it's you know Tamara's wind office in her office it's like the same thing over and over again you know it's kind of like it's keeping me in this box and I feel like they need to just pull the camera back a little bit and just show me a little bit more range uh, when it comes from a cinematic perspective the, the the script is moving along it's getting there it's just really really hard for me to engage and me to be really really uh, like you know the only thing that's keeping me is just knowing what's the end to this you know what who did what where where how I just I just it's just a curiosity like I I'm so close to maybe just making up an ending on my own in my mind because I hope that when by the time we get to the end of this season I'm not disappointed I just got that gut feeling we're gonna be hella disappointed and it's gonna be like okay that's it that's what they did okay all right um also there's a lot of danger when it comes to Gary Shay's widow. The fact that she's still by herself and she has the baby and we haven't revisited her property to speak with her kind of throws up a red flag. And we still, you guys, we still have not seen a scene of them actually in a courtroom. We haven't seen anything that they need when it comes to the to the <laughs> even the judge signing paperwork, uh, submitting. I mean, it's just. When you watch a lot of mysteries and lawyer shows, you start to see the little writing errors here and there when it comes to a law firm, when it comes to fluidity and all this other stuff. So it's just it's a little interesting. It's just a little off, but it's still entertaining. It's still, you know, beautiful black people and it's, you know, black creators and everything like that. So it's good to support it. I just hope that the season, you know, speeds up just, 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 just a little bit. Um, also... <laughs> Like I said in the last episode, we don't need the children in this series. It's just too, too, too many people. It's too many characters that are unnecessary that we don't need. We don't need those characters. I mean, I know they're already in the script. I mean, they're there, but it's just annoying. And it gets to the point where you forget about Marcus. You forget about Dion. You forget about Maya because you're like, who cares? <laughs> Can we just get back to the case? I just, whatever. Um, so I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. So the character of Nate, I hope he has enough information, body language, vibes, whatever you want to call from Miss uh, Christine, because I hope he's, he knows, okay, and has figured out that it's more between her and Andre, right? And if so, he needs to get his sister that's the lawyer to get them people out of his house ASAP. Because there's no way you're going to be living in my house on my dime when another man and my son is living with my auntie under the impression that you're trying to get your life together. Oh, no, no, no. Pack your things. Pack your stuff. Here I am trying to learn how to get out of my wheelchair and in my bed and putting on my clothes by myself and thinking about you and putting puzzles together and, you know, thinking about, dang, are they, can they take us into Agna Falls? Can the boat get us there? Trying to think of all these plans. But you don't want to go there with me oh no hunty i would have been like after that night i would say oh well i guess that's over so i guess you need to find somewhere else to stay and he needs to focus on getting the custody of his son because delilah putting on all of this this responsibility because of his marriage and what's going on i mean it's helpful but it's been long enough it's time to move on <laughs> let me know what you th oh one more thing mr Connolly, chief Connolly. oh yes dear um what have you done in the past right that made you super submissive to not you know wanting to go further with this i do think that demetria and chief Connolly are going to be the super saver people at the end they're going to have some information that's needed if they don't hurry up and find more information about this this rick pattingale or whatever his name is can we hurry up and find him can they not tell that this either this person doesn't exist or I just and you have the evidence some of the information you got remember because Harper she called what 100 people and six people responded that's enough that's enough you don't have to you know you can return all them files you get them six the, the six document on six people that's enough that's enough for you to take to court and you can have those people as witnesses ask them that they want to be witnesses in court that they got this is the documents that they got like I mean come on it, it don't take my Matlock to figure this out nobody you know um yeah, but just let, let me know what you think. I think I have it figured out. I think I know what's going to happen. 
But as it gets closer to the end of the season, I'll say my prediction. And I think I'm right. But I don't want to, you know, ruin it because I'm always like 10 step, steps ahead when it comes to mysteries like this. But we need more when it comes to specific detail of the actual event. I know we're still early in the season, but there's just so much unnecessary things that we're, they're throwing at us that could be thrown out. And we could get the deets of what's really going on with one thing at a time. They're skipping to so many different things so many times. It's just unnecessary, you know. <sighs> Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And also follow me on Instagram so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Make sure. I also put it in the comments. So make sure that you check out the pinned comment. Make sure that you check out the new season of Ready to Love. That's a dating reality show. Click the link on that and make sure that you watch the first two episodes so you can, you know, be a flow with everybody else. So you can join us in the debates and let us know your thoughts. Also, check out um, other shows. Queen Sugar, Handmaid's Tale is coming April 28th. Uh, we also have Iyana, Fix My Life. The final six episodes begins April 10th. So make sure you check that out. And a lot of these final six episodes are the part twos, right? That happened earlier in the season. So if you need to see those, make sure that you click on the Iyana Van Zandt playlist link. I'll put that in the comments. And also check out Bell Collective, all right? Check out that playlist, binge watch that as well. Let me, let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you think that Bell, if Bell Collective will return for a season two. Let me know what you think about that. I'm kind of shaky. I don't know if it's going to have a, a, a season two. But if it has a season two, it's going to be a stretch. But let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Ready to Love. It's a fun dating show let me know i can't wait to read your comments if you're too shy shy feel free to send me a dm on instagram so we can get our chat on okay and also last but certainly not least the of course all of these links will be in the comments and the pinned comment below make sure that you check out the playlist entitled let's talk which which is a playlist that in, in that engulfs nothing but pop culture it's not a movie or a television show um, playlist. It is certain things that happen in pop culture. Um, it's Instagram live conversation. It's podcast. All of that good stuff. So check that out. Now, for real, for real, I'm out of here. Make sure that you leave your comments, like this video, and share the information about this family-friendly channel. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Kisses. Bye.